čovjek koji dolazi iz SAP-a, odnosno SAP-a, Central and Eastern Europe. Tema je CX Reloaded, How to establish a customer-centric business design. Dakle, godinama su customer experience profesionalci, izvršni direktori, lideri u industriji razgovarali o usmerenosti na kupca. Ali ko je zaista održao obećanje da će se usred srediti na kupca? Ko je zaista uključio kupca u središte njihovog poslovnog dizajna? Kako je stanje u CX-u i kako možemo da predvidimo promene koje su došle sa pandemijskom situacijom. O tome ćemo razgovarati sada, dakle, šta CX zaista znači kako da osmislite svoje poslovanje sa posmatranjem kupca u centru. Hi, Walker, how are you doing? Hi, I'm good. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, loud and clear. Do, can you hear us? I can hear you. Which screen do you actually see at the moment? Uh, we see CX reloaded and uh, next folie. And uh, <laughs> we see we see one to the to the our left. Yeah, now and now if you hit uh, full screen, yeah, we're gonna see we're gonna see the whole the whole shebang. Um, uh, thank you for for joining us. And what I just said is that for years, custom experience professionals and and executive directors and uh, industry leaders have been talking about this you know customer centric. Uh, and but we're going to check who actually kept that promise and focused actually to their customer and uh, who really involved customers in the center of their business design. So what is the condition? Actually, what is the state in CX now? And how can we predict any changes which came with the, with the pandemic? So let's talk about what CX really means and how can we deal with our uh, own business and uh, uh, have our customer in the center. So Walker, once again, uh, welcome and hit it. The floor is yours. Thank you very much for this introduction. So thank you and uh, welcome to my session. I want to talk with you today about um, unpacking customer experience and how it really has changed over the recent month, um, how to put the customer into the middle of your business and what you need in the end to turn a black box customer into a well-known 360 degree customer profile. So in the end, what we will discuss today is actually how to turn data into insights and insights into action. And I actually believe that some of you might feel familiar with the following scene that was kind of the normality before actually COVID-19 hit. So most companies out there underestimated the power of digitalization. They underestimated the disruptive impact, the power of new revenue streams or of new customer experiences. And digitalization often was something where you was looking at and then you had kind of the notion that you will need it someday, but that you will still have a lot of time to do so. Because in the end, everything was running great. Like your company was running great, your revenue streams were running great, your channels were running great, your um, employees were running great. So there was actually no need to change something. So this is how you then stepped into 2020 and you had your plans perfectly laid out and you tried to achieve your goals and your results and plan to deliver onto the best year ever. And then COVID said hello and turned everything that we thought can't be turned around in the end upside down. And the impact was the, the, the impact on this world was really enormous. Like business changed overnight and customer behavior changed overnight. And we as companies, we were pushed into a totally new world without even a notice. And how most companies actually happened and how most companies actually reacted was that they got paralyzed. They were absolutely shocked by the impact and they, they got frozen. Most companies froze their budget they stopped all business development activities. They cut at CX programs in half. They laid off employees. And I had so many customers across CE in advanced talks about their, the, the future of their CX program and how to revolutionize their CX program. And the first reaction to the pandemic was actually to stop those talks. But freezing and doing nothing is never an option. It's never a tactic that pays out, especially in difficult times. And let me tell you this. If your organization was shocked by the pandemic, it is not because of the pandemic. It is because of your organization, because it wasn't resilient enough. It was not agile enough to actually react onto the immediate changes in the market situation and also the ability to actually anticipate uh, market dynamics. Here. And while we are accepting 
uh, this new normal and why we are accepting these kind of new reality, also most companies are coming slowly back to business because they understand that this will not pass away quickly and easily and that they need to move on to actually get out of this pandemic strength. And this kind of new normal that we are now into, it's not like that this just exists out of its own. Like the pandemic came and then we had a new normal. The new normal is actually existing because people are accepting it and moving forward. And while they are moving forward, unthinkable things actually happened in this world. Like for example, working from home, having those virtual events like right now, shopping grocery for online, for example, um, having remote workshops, or for example, governments and CE, like for example, in Bulgaria, using our cloud solutions, or actually SAP providing software for free in the beginning of the pandemic in March and April and May. And also the customer example I will show you afterwards, it was actually an implementation fully remote. All of those things that were actually before COVID hit unthinkable. And there was another thing which was actually unthinkable, which is this one. There is a recent McKinsey study out there around uh, CE, and they indicate that we will have or that we already having 12 million new users of online services. So what we really saw within CE is a heavy push in digitalization. Like for example, prior to the pandemic, 61% of all citizens across CE use digital services. And right now it's at 76%. And it's not only the young people who are actually using the online services. It's actually also the group of people over 65 grew by 40%. And many industries were impacted. Like for example, banking, it was telco, um, grocery shopping online doubled its size or the retail grew, for example, by 70%. And the thing with this is now that those people will not disappear anymore. They will not go away when the pandemic is over or when we will have a vaccine. They will stay. And this is kind of, it is kind of remarkable that something like this also happens in fairy tales because what happened in the fairy tale of Alice in Wonderland is exactly the same that is happening right now. This scene that you are right now seeing here is where Alice went down this rabbit hole and where she had to shrink herself to actually walk through the door into the wonderland. And this is exactly what we experience at the moment. And this is what I call the kind of the Alice moment or the point of no return. Because if you're walking through this door, nothing will be the same afterwards. You cannot just walk through the door into the wonderland and then coming back to kind of your normal reality and act like nothing happened. And the same is true with digitalization. If you figured out the advantages and the enormous impact this has on your business, then it's absolutely mind blowing. And if you figure this out, it's like that you cannot act anymore like you would know. Because for example, why would you use a fax machine if you can chat via WhatsApp? Why would you go back to strict office hours if within your, your home office, you have relaxed office hours and it, and it worked out perfectly. So what happened here is that COVID pushed us through this door of digitalization because companies were forced to innovate their digital channels and to step through the store. And while you were stepping through the store, this means that the old world is done. The old customer behavior, the old way of doing business will not come back as before. And this also means that the kind of old playbook for CX, which is out there, is done as well. And the old ways of running CX program, for example, as a separated part of marketing or customer service or sales or something, this will not work anymore because of the Alice moment or the Alice impact. Because why would you go back to a Windows 95 machine if you could have Windows 10? And the question is now, what's the actual difference between losers and winners in the pandemic. What's the difference between companies succeeding in this pandemic and other companies are actually going bankrupt? And this has to do with the capabilities of companies to react onto this change with their resilience and their agility to adapt to change market dynamics. And also with their leadership, not going back to the old setting, but adapting and paving the path forward into the future. And it also has to do with what we call from SAP, the intelligent enterprise. 
a full digital strategy that enables your company running end-to-end -end fully automated intelligent business processes at scale. And this has also to do with the ability of companies to analyze the right data sets and to drive the right conclusions out of the data that you are actually getting. So the question is now, what do you actually need for the intelligent enterprise? And what you need is two things. On the one side, you need working processes or processes, and on the other side, you need those insights. So what you need within the processes is a fully automated value and supply chain. You need business operations and business processes that have to work perfectly, that are automated, which are intelligence, and you need to have end-to-end -end processes starting with your customer's interest, for example, the marketing and sales process, going to the manufacturing, the billing, the logistics, the finances, um, customer service, then getting into the customer segment or sentiments, and also having the analytics afterwards. And the second thing that you need for this is you actually need to have insights. Insights into why things are actually happening, why is your business evolving into a specific sense, and what drives those changes, and why do people decide on how they are actually deciding. So what you in the end need to run this intelligent enterprise is insights into the most important person in your business. And who is the most important person in your business? It is actually your customer. And we all know this. We are all customer centric and we always say customer first. But the question is, what do we actually do for it? Who really centralized their customer at the heart of the company? Because what you, what you need for this to centralize this customer at the heart of your company is actually that you need to understand or that you need to generate those insights into the feeling and behavior of your customers. And if you do not have those insights, you do not have any measurements to actually do something about this. So to put the customer first or to put the customer into the middle of your business, you actually need the right data and insights about your customers. And the reality is that most of the customers are unknown out there. The reality is that even if you're saying as a company, I know my customers, when we're really looking into your data and, 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 and seeing the, the data that you get up, in the most cases, your customer is unknown. Because what we always find when we work with customer is that they gathering this data, because this is nothing new, like companies gathered customer data over the last whatever, 20 years. But the problem is it's siloed, it's fragmented, it's incomplete, it's shared. And you have different departments working on different data sets, like marketing has their own data, sales has their own data. And the thing with this is that if you do not have a stable data foundation where you can really derive those insights out of the data, then you are more or less blind and walking outside of the door and really dealing with your customers. So what you need to do is for sure gather all this data, but what you also need to do is to analyze the data and to really drive those insights out of the data. And the problem of silent data and fragmented data is something like this. But the thing with this is that somebody within this company, within this headphone company, they thought about the packaging design for those headphones. And they thought about this in a way that they said, okay, we know our customer, we know our customer's behavior and their needs, and we know how customers are actually using our packaging design. So this, what you just saw, could be a result of silent data about the customer. And what we actually need is those customer insights, really knowing your customer. So you need to know on which channels is your customer operating how to market those channels, how to convince your customer, how to get them into a buying state, how to satisfy them when they bought so that they do not call your support hotline, and also how to overachieve their expectations, how to turn customer into fans, for example. And for this, customer insights are everything, and your whole organization needs to be aligned around this to really target your customer. And what you need to target your customer is a 360 customer profile, a profile that, that completes across all channels, that makes sense out of the data that you are having and giving you insights that you can actually turn into action. 
And this is why those 360 degree CX suite is so important for SAP. And this is why we do not just stop at, for example, marketing cloud or sales cloud or commerce cloud, or think about this as separated entities. Our strategy and our thinking about customer experience is really to integrate the data across all steps of the customer journey and to end, to really enable this, this kind of real analytics and the intelligent processes that we need to actually fulfill our customer needs. And this is why we think about CX as a segmentation, not separately, but as a essential part about the whole value and supply chain. And this is why we have this unique approach to actually combine all of those data sets into one powerful CX suite that integrates with other systems. So if you're now gathering all the data, so you understand this and you say you buy into this and you say, yes, let's gather all this data. So what do we actually need together? And before we, we deep dive into this, hang on for a sec, because we need to understand why are we actually looking into this data set? So what we really have to understand is that we're living now in an experience economy. So what makes people buy at this stage is not just only the price or the functional features or the color of something, but it's more or less the experience around the thing that you want to, do, want to buy. It is really about how you feel about the product and what it does mean really for you. And to, to better understand this, let's have a look onto Tesla. Because Tesla is for me an example about the experience economy. Because Tesla sold cars without people test driving it. Again, Tesla sold cars without people test driving it. Can you imagine paying 60K for something you never saw, you've never touched, you've never smelled, you never feel, you never drove? My brother did. He paid 60K for a car he never drove before. And the question is, why is he doing this? And he's doing this because he loves the brand, because he supports the idea of Tesla behind the brand. And what Tesla actually did to him was not just branding, it was actually bonding. And this becomes the most important thing in business. If people love your brand, if you did this bonding instead of the branding, people will buy and people will recommend your brand. And recommendation, and this is what we know from the market, is really becoming the, the buying power of customers. The net promoter score, so the uh, recommendation rate of customers for your business really matters for our businesses. So how do you achieve that people fell in love with your brand, for example? And there are two things about this. The one thing is, for sure, you have to deliver on the promise in regards to your customer. So your product needs to be perfect, your supply chain, your business processes, it has to be fully automated, it has to work perfectly and seamless. But there's one other thing that needs to be perfect. And to better understand this, I want to take you into a little exercise. And this exercise has to do with loving each other. So think about the one point when you fell in love with your significant other. And then think about what is love actually. And what love is actually is the feeling that you are gathering with your significant other. And now think about when did this actually happen? And when you try to, to think about the one situation where you said, okay, now I'm in love, I'm sure that this is very difficult for you because it, it is not just one single situation. It is actually, all touch points across your love journey with your significant other. It could be the first impression, it could be the speaking, the texting, the first kiss, the sleepover, all those things together. They actually came together into that you saying, I love you. And it's not just one single experience, it's the sum of experiences. And the same thing happened in our business life. The same thing happened when you go into a store and you try to buy something. It is not just this one single incident or this single experience. It is the sum of experiences that you are gathering um, together or, or that you are gathering in regards to this specific brand. And the thing is now, and this is what we then do, is to really understand the impact on those experiences or of those experiences onto your business and the impact on your business. And 
to better understand this, you have to understand the nature of data. So we have two natures here. The one thing is what I said in regards to your supply chain and value chain. So all the operational data, all the business processes and uh, business operations that have to work perfectly, which is the operational data. So everything in regards to your, for example, store performance, the conversion rate, cart abandonment, uh, the number of service calls. And on the other side, you have what we call the experience data, which is what do people think about? It? How much effort did they spend, for example, in configuration in a specific product? Do they recommend your brand, for example? And what you need to do to run really experience at its finest is to understand the experience gaps, both in the experience data and the operational data. So really the gaps where you are actually cannot match what customers are expecting from you. And what you need to then to do is to, to translate this into business terms and into business impact and to really understand what happens after a good experience and a bad experience. And to make this more concrete, I want to show you one example. So what you're seeing here is a data analysis view, and it's really helping you to understand or, or the, the cases here that you want to understand the correlation between customer loyalty and employee engagement. And this is pretty easy because we all know that happy employees, when they are doing a good service to your customers, it will increase customer loyalty. So super easy. And this is what the data tells you here. The question is now, what do you need to do in employee engagement, for example, if you want to increase customer loyalty? And for 99% of companies out there, it is a black box. And we help you to discover this black box because we help you to understand what are the drivers that really drives your business forward. Like for example, here now in the employee engagement, what we're seeing here is that the most impact on employee engagement is actually the communication within teams. And why is this such a game changer? Because you're having right now here at your fingertip a clear business case that you never had before. Because if you're now saying you want to increase 1% in customer loyalty, that would mean, for example, 100K in revenue. And for this one increase in customer loyalty, you need to increase employee engagement, for example, by 2%. This is what the data will tell. So what you now can do is to understand how can you increase 2% of employee engagement. And you can increase those 2% by, for example, establishing a feedback culture and running a coaching workshop for this, which would cost 20K, that you can actually increase this number of the communication within teams. So you're having on the one side the revenue of 100K, increasing customer loyalty in regards to the investment of 20K for a workshop, which will boost forward your employee engagement. And this is really mind blowing because it really helps companies to understand better the market. And this is what we did, for example, with Zeta Park. So they had the question, should they give out a low printing quality for the packages and a fast delivery time? Or should they put more effort into the quality of the printing, but then having a longer time of, of delivery? And we help them to figure this out, for example. So this is for sure not the view that you will see as the kind of normal user. This is more or less what you would see to really understand in a scalable way, way to really understand where do you have to focus within your business on one view to really understand what is going on here. So what we actually helping companies to do is to turn data into insights and to turn those insights into action that you are actually replacing getting with knowing and helping to democratize the data analytics. In the end, to establish an end-to-end -end customer journey. And this begins, for example, with the consent of data, with the consent of somebody posting within your social media channels and, and giving comments to you, for example which is based on our, for example, customer data platform, then running a marketing campaign via Marketing Cloud, for example, the configuration of a customer within the mobile e-commerce store, for example, for a specific product, Commerce Cloud, then the production via ERP and manufacturing, the send out logistics via the logistics hub, the service management, and so on and so on. So really an end-to-end -end customer journey where you integrate the data with each other to really understand what is going on here. And in each and every step of this customer journey to ask the customer for feedback, to really understand the sentiment of the customer. And this is especially what we did with United Group, the telecommunication and media provider, 
because they wanted to innovate their business. They really thought about the future of their business and, and figured out that they need to do something differently in the future. So what they thought about is to establish an e-commerce marketplace that recently went live. So what they actually did is they opened up a marketplace, also new sales channels to small and medium businesses who can insert their products onto their marketplace, for example. Another example that we did in Switzerland with Valora is actually what they call the AVAC box. It is a lab, fully functional, fully working, where they try to figure out what is the future of e-commerce, what's the future of customer experience. So what we did with them is a fully automated score, cashierless, people-less, where you have an app to open the door and you can go into the store, pick your products, scan it with the app, pay it with the app, and then you get for the next visit that you are having, you're getting um, product recommendations based on your history, based on, on the feedback that you are, were actually giving in regards to the, to the products. How do we start it, ideas like this? Or how can you now start your journey in regards to the CX program? The first step is always to think it from a customer-centric approach. We have several formats, several engagement formats that you can use to really get into a customer-centric view onto your business and really figuring out, okay, what is the future of my specific industry? What is the future of my CX program? And then we step in quickly into a mode where we really try things out. So for example, having a prototype, we have formats. Now you see here SAP Poland, for example, where we code one week, where we have, have uh, prototypes out there that you can actually feel, touch, and put into practice and really gathering those insights about how can you actually improve it. And then in the end, there's no way around adapting it. So really putting um, the thing live, really showing the value towards uh, your industry. And this is three easy steps of how you can think about customer experience in a different way of how you bring customer experience in a prototyping way to life, and then how you can actually influence customer experience within also your company culture. Thank you very much for your attendance. And now I hope that there are some questions that I can answer. Um, um, I don't see any questions for you. It seems like everything is everything is loud and clear. Um, Herr Hein, no, no questions. So, vielen Dank, Herr Hein. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, thank okay, you. no questions still. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, let's uh, go on with our uh, with our.